Well, now I want to introduce Tom Farrell. Hey, the pleasure is always mine to be on your show. And, uh, you know, I'm just happy to participate. And, uh, you know, I've got 42 presentations. I can go all night. <laughs> all right. Kidding aside, this is... Um, I do have 42 presentations. But <laughs> there, this is part two of the new Turtle Creek, uh, West Turtle Creek scene on the Rustic Buff and Old Gothic. This is going to feature tunnels and mining scenes and bridges and all kinds of neat things. Uh, last time I was working on a timber tunnel dual portal. Uh, I finished that and... Uh, this is where I left off last week, and uh, it dramatically changes when you uh, have all the components on and uh, weather it. And you hardly know it's the same model, but that's the completed tunnel portal. So that's before it's finished, and that's after. And just going back to here, these little squares are uh, 040 styrene that I simply cut in strips and then with my chopper, I cut them off. Uh, and then I glue these um, grant line uh, bolt and nut uh, combinations on there with styrene glue. And that's the look you get. And it uh, on the layout, it looks outstanding. So that's, uh, that's where she goes. I glued it in place and um, you know, it's scratch built. There's probably not, um, you know, five bucks in the whole thing. And uh, you can't buy anything like that. Next is uh, a little uh, fascia extension. So uh, we're going to be all over the place today from retaining walls to buildings to working with lumber. So anybody that's familiar with my layout knows that I have this green fascia MDF board running the perimeter of the layout. It's all in place. And uh, I have cabinets below, custom cabinets that I built. And then above, anytime I'm going to have scenery, I simply add a fascia board on top. And um, I had this piece of pine, so I took an exception to my MDF and I used... Uh, Cut this out with my jigsaw and then I sanded it smooth and uh, it's 36 inches long and at its highest point it's seven inches in height. Um, I'm going to show you how I attach that to my MDF board. At four inch intervals I uh, put some measurements and I match them up from the the, the pine board to the uh, uh, fascia I draw to match because I'm going to put doll, dowel rods in here. And if it's off a little bit, the dowel rod won't fit. So when I do this, I'm very careful to drill one hole and then carefully mark the exact dead center of the other hole. And then I go, I cut the dowel rods. They're two inches in length, approximately. I fill them with this, uh, fill the holes with both sides with this, um, tight bond yellow glue. Now, when I've did this in the past, I've sanded this off, this paint off, so that you're gluing MDF, raw MDF to raw pine. But um, I didn't this time. <laughs> the, the strength really comes from the dowel rods. And there it is, uh, glued into place. And um, there's the first coat of paint. Um, let's see where I have to fill in some of these areas and sand. Um, but I'll make it perfectly smooth when we're done, when I'm done. And, uh, it, it's a nice look. So the layout's not endless flatness. There's, uh, there's ups and downs to the layout. Next up is a timber retaining wall that I'm making, uh, for that tunnel portal, right next to the tunnel portal that I featured. I always start many of my projects. This is a one eighth inch plywood base that I cut to 11 half inches in width, 
5.75 inches in height. And then I took these, um, I'm really enamored with these Hunter line stains. I've got about seven or eight bottles of this stuff. And I started, this goes um, a driftwood, a medium brown and a light gray. So there's really three different colors here. And these are just simply uh, craft sticks from Hobby Lobby. So they're very inexpensive. And uh, it's really a nice effect when you glue them on that plywood that I showed you. Um, I cut them all to a, um, a six inch length and then a five and a half inch length. And I just staggered them back and forth, back and forth, different colors, keeping a uh, gap here that is, um, I went back and I marked that this gap between the, um, this joint is uh, two inches or eight feet. And then I went with a uh, square and I marked uh, this, basically this two inch uh, interval. And then I began adding these uh, 12 by 12s, which are quarter inch material. Now that's pretty, you can see the, see the graining on there. I took my razor saw and dragged it across three or, you know, depending on how many sides we're showing, three or two sides. So I had that complete. And these ones fit in between. This was quite time consuming and I wanted them real tight. Um, and then I had to stop because I was out of these, these grant line, quarter inch scale, O scale, two and a half inch square nuts on six inch washers. These just came in this morning. So that's this photograph's fresh, but I, I couldn't finish this. Um, next time you'll see this finished wall in place on the layout since my order came in. They came in in a couple of days. That was um, $27 you're looking at right there, just for reference. <laughs> of course, I won't use them all on that wall, but I wanted to have an adequate supply of them because I use them. So there's the wall in place without the hardware. You can see the side here. This is the look I will achieve when I'm complete with this wall, but it fits just fine, exactly how I wanted it right behind this stone abutment. And that's that's gonna be colored as well. That's a base color on there next time. And uh, because I ran out of those uh, grant line components, I switched to the coal tipple. And I started, uh, this started with a, basically, uh, I don't have a, I, I forgot to take a picture of the, uh, the box and uh, I, I added these quarter inch 12 by 12s to the front of this without taking a picture of the box, the uh, the bin, if you will. This you, this will all get covered. I mean, you'll see this uh, develop as, as next week I should have it finished, but this is all very raw right now. Um, this is the back of the coal tipple. So I added these 12 by 12s here sort of a confusing photograph. This is actually the front of the model here. The top half is the back of the model. There, there, that makes it clear. So uh, I added this, I painted this black. Nobody's gonna see this. I was debating on whether to run uh, two by 12s through here, or, or I'm sorry, uh, four by 12s, or some massive piece of wood to support the coal. Nobody's going to see this. So after the show, somebody, maybe somebody give me a couple of comments whether I should run those beams down or not. I mean, I've looked seven ways to Sunday when this is on the layout and you just can't see them. <laughs> I don't know. So I put a uh, gondola on here, a wooden gondola, just to make sure that, you know, that we have the, I have the proper height here. And uh, I mean, it looks close enough. I can lower this. I can cut this foam if I wanted a little lower. I'd like somebody else's opinion on that too, whether you think that's excessive height after the show, if somebody could comment. Uh, that'd be interesting to know. Uh, it's tough to see in prototypical photos. And I looked and I looked and I looked. It's pretty tough to see that detail in these old photos. This was the side of the uh, coal tipple. Um, it looks pretty rough there. I added these uh, four by fours. These little fuzzies were burnt off or sanded off. 
Now you can see the model really starting to shape up. I added um, some cross bracing here and some other strips of wood here. And uh, it's just like everything is a layering process and a question of patience. On top of that structure is a building. And as I'm treating this, I started with a plywood base and then uh, I marked uh, at half inch uh, intervals, actually quarter inch intervals, and where the uh, two by eights will go, because I'm putting, as you'll see, I'm putting a sidewalk on there. I, I'll show you how that plays in later. This is the tipple building front wall. It's uh, board and batten. You'll see in a moment. So if I laid out the uh, where the windows go. Um, because this thing's roughly um, eight inches, nine inches in length, um, I had to glue, super glue two pieces together here to, right there's the seam, you can't even see it, um, to get that width. Now, the interesting thing about board and batten, I featured this, this last year, when you put in windows and trim, you have to trim the batten back or your windows won't fit correctly. So see, I've cut out for the window and I've removed and this batten has been physically carved out with an X-Acto knife. And on the bottom here, I've already cut out for the trim, a two by six trim or one by six I'm using. So what I do is I just draw a line here with a piece of one by six strip wood then I lay a ruler on there, and then with a very sharp blade, I it goes click, 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 click as you're cutting these uh, the tops of the battens off. I cut, go make two passes, and then I just go back and carve out the battens. So these are the two side walls. There's a lot of work in one of these. So you want to be when I'm doing this, I want to be careful that I don't screw it up, because not only do you have to cut it out, you got to cut the windows out, you got to cut all these, it's just a little bit of work in there, but it's well worth it because when you put the windows on, they fit flush. They don't stick out on top of the batten. And there's all the pieces for the building that sits on top of the tipple. So there's the left wall, the right wall, the back wall, the front. This is that plywood base. I've put a quarter inch material around the perimeter so that these walls have something to glue. I have something to glue to on the bottom. Next, I had to choose the paint color. So I took those window cutouts and I tried various combinations. So I got something. I was originally thinking uh, blue because I got a lot of green buildings on the layout. Then I thought I'd try an off white. Then I thought it was probably unlikely that they'd ever paint a coal tipple white. So then I did a blue green. I really didn't want to paint every favorite. I don't have too many red buildings. So that's what I wound up with. I used how that technique is done is I over the raw wood, I put down this hunter line medium brown. It's a it's it's really sort of a dark brown. I put that down, let it dry, and then with a dry brush, I take a a, a relatively wide artist brush, camel hair brush, and I put some paint out on a little dish. And then I dip the brush in the paint. And then before I apply paint to the model, I wipe the brush either on a scrap piece of wood or a paper towel or whatever I have, ha have handy that I want. I want to take the bulk of the paint off, but enough that I get some color when I actually do it. And it's a beautiful technique. Um, look at that. I mean, that just blew me away how nice that came out. Um, it's exactly the finish I wanted. The ha another happy accident by Tom Farrell. <clears throat> you can see these two by eights going across the bottom. If you recall, on the flip side, when I made all those um, with my square I'm and a pencil, I made those... Uh, guides for these. I wound up going every half inch, not every quarter inch. Quarter inch looked too busy. Half inch is equal to two feet. Um, 
I thought a quarter inch a foot would be too too tight. It's probably something in between, but I figured this was sufficient for this building. And then uh, I strengthened the roof with these uh, quarter inch material or, or prepared for strengthening the roof. And then my classic, I paint everything black with an inexpensive acrylic flat because when you look through these windows, I don't, I don't detail the inside of my buildings and I don't want you to see anything. So there's the roof bracing. Sometimes I'll run bracing up and down here. I debated doing that, but when I, I said, you know, if I put all this in and I glue the roof on across here, that'll be sufficiently strong. You can see I put quarter inch bracing along the front, back and up and down the side. So the whole model is boxed with quarter inch uh, basswood. Then I glued a um, eighth inch basswood roof on there. I painted the underside of it black. So if you look into the model and look up at the ceiling, you don't see anything. It's just a black abyss. And then uh, I pre-paint that so I don't have to, I pre-paint this, like I say, makes it easier when you uh, put this trim in and whatnot, it's already pre-painted. And here you can see I've, be, I've begun putting the trim on. This is a uh, one by six material. These are two by eights. You can see the relief that I cut for the trim. And I take the batten off the corner. This, if, it, if a batten happens to hit the corner, I shave the corner down so that the trim will fit flush onto the board and batten. There's the front. And I shave the batten off of that one. You can see the uh, relief for the trim. It's pretty obvious there. And that's a really nice finish. I like it. Looks like hell. <clears throat> <laughs> Here is the beginnings of the deck that I'm putting on. So I put a kicker board around the perimeter. I had to build this out. Um, another piece of trim here. All the windows were uh, grant line and I, I'm enamored with this chalky finish. Um, I've used it before on my models. I painted all my windows a chalky finish. It's has a little bit of bite to it. So when you want to put pastels on it, or uh, in, in my case, I just took one of those hunter line. After this dried, I took one of those hunter line. Uh, I think I used, um, I don't remember which one, but a light brown. And I basically painted these windows with the hunter line after the chalky white was dry. Gave me a really nice color. It almost matches the wood. This photograph doesn't do it justice. These are pretty close in, uh, it's, it's all about the lighting, I guess. But um, there I began doing the decking. I'm going to go back and channel these so they're not 20 foot long boards. You Sometimes I put in little pieces. Sometimes I just go back and cut them out. This time I'm gonna cut them out. There it is coming along there. That's a, it's just sitting up there now, but that's a pretty handsome looking little structure now. It's, it's come a long way. And, uh, you know, there'll be metal flashing on this. I'm going to put a sign here. And then I'm going to put some of those grant line uh, details like you saw in the tunnel here. And then some simple bolts here. So, you know, I've got a long way to go with this thing. Um, here it is with that car in place. I do want somebody's comment if um, I can lower this foam, make this go a little closer if I have to. Be interesting to know. Uh, moving on to the roof. Um, this is the this company is no longer in business. Paper Creek Model Works. This is a black tar paper. Now Jim Kello he commented that all my roofs look different. That's we have discussed this in the past that one of the first things people see are roofs, but I try to not have duplicate roofs. One of the interesting things about my railroad is there are virtually no two roofs that are alike. So this time I scanned this Paper Creek 
uh, sheet into my computer. Uh, well, I, I, I'll show you what I did. The, the, this is a building using the, uh, this is a building that I use uh, this Paper Creek as is. I didn't change it. I just put it in place there. So that's the look with coming right off the, <clears throat> as you would buy it. But I didn't want to show that this building is pretty close to the tipple and I didn't want them to have identical roofs. So I took this paper, I scanned it, and I decreased the size, and I recolorized it in PowerPoint. You can recolorize it to green, blue, black, gray, whatever you want. And I got this beautiful look. <laughs> it, it, it's uh, completely different than this, but it's the same, same material, just scanned into PowerPoint, recolorized, and resized. You, know, you got to cut it out with an exacto knife, so you have to have patience. But this way, there's two different roofs. These buildings are within a couple of feet of each other, so I really didn't want to have the same roof, in the same vicinity. And I haven't weathered this yet to the degree that you saw the other tunnel portal, but I'm thinking next time I'll have these steel brackets in place, and this will all be weathered. And same with this. This. Both of these should be finished next time. And uh, it's just turning out to be a really handsome coal tipple. <laughs> I really like that red color. I'm glad I went with red, not my normal green. So uh, that's it, folks. Well, Tom, I think that's gorgeous. No question about it. And I thank you so much for uh, filling in a little bit tonight. I really do appreciate that. Any uh, comments on that gap between the chute and the car? Is that eight feet, four feet, two feet? Does anybody know? Um, I, I, it looks correct for me, okay. um, but I'm no expert on coal tipples. Uh, I think it's beautiful, <laughs> but I have a question. Uh -huh. What do you uh, plan to hide the foam that it's sitting on with? You must have some plan for what's going to go behind yeah, the chutes uh, and the posts. Back here. Yeah, I was... Um, Originally, I was going to um, put a, um, of course, nothing works now. <laughs> I'm going to sculpt a uh, a rock face there. Uh-huh. I'm yeah, going nice. to put sculptable there and uh, sculpt a rock face. So I was going to put a, a brick or a stone or a block, or, and I thought, I have too many of these now in that scene, but I don't have a rock face. So that's what I'm going to do. I may slope it a little bit. I got a lot of leeway there with that. So, uh, yeah, I'll probably have that done too next time. Yeah. Tom. Um, yeah. Pat here. Uh, that Those shoots, mm -hmm. that line does not go all the way through, does it? It just backs up into there and that's it. That, uh, the rail line? Does it go right fine. by that? It just goes right in front. You know, and that's so it. Yeah, it uh, there'll be one yeah. be behind it up high, but that's a different. But it doesn't go uh, past that. No, rolling tower. Well, the main done? lines, the main lines in front here, and these yeah, are, that goes by. These are two spurs. So they actually go right by that coaling tower. That line, that rail line, goes right straight through. Does it when when it's in place? This is going to be a collapsed tunnel. Okay. This is going to be a hobo camp and a collapsed tunnel. In front here are two um, double track main line, and here are there'll be bumpers here to keep these cars from falling. Okay, off. that's yeah. what I was wondering. Because if you went straight through, an engine would hit those. Oh, I see what you're saying. No, yeah. this is this is um, no, an engine okay. could go over here perhaps, but not here. Yep. And there'll, there'll be uh, bumpers here. Yep. Okay. Gotcha. Now, Tom, this is Jeff. Uh, I think your height is about right. I'm I'm looking at it in reference to, you may recall, uh, I modeled the coaling uh, pockets advanced junction in Colorado, and yeah. I compared the pictures, and it's very, very similar. Now, uh, on my structure, because the locomotive has to be able to run by, those yeah. things are hinged, and they hinge up. But when they're down, their height is right about there. So I, I think it looks right. 
Now, I assume you're going to add sideboards on those chutes and probably some kind of doors to control the flow of the, the coal as well. Yeah, they, they'll be uh, they'll be shut and there'll be doors uh, here and some sort of mechanism. That's why I put the side walk in up here so these guys can open these doors. I haven't figured that out yet, but there's going to be some sort of chain deal and lever so they can open the doors from up here is the scheme. So it'll be three levers. And this Grant will be line, Grant line makes a really nice little casting set for the door on a coal tipple. It, it comes with a couple of gears and a chain, and and though it's it's designed uh, for the guy to be below, I wonder if you couldn't just flip it around and have the chain go up, and they could pull the chain to open uh, the the doors through the gear mechanism. That's a good idea. These take are... a look at the the Grant line uh, yeah. uh, 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 set. It's it's a multi part set specifically for coal tipple doors, and I think it's a really nice piece. These things are just very raw here. I'm going to put uh, styrene on here to simulate metal and some sort of bolt pattern here and sides, and then this these will all be closed with some sort of gate. And uh, like I say, this the idea was to have the the whole reason I put this platform up here was so these guys could manually open these gates, you know. So uh, that's the idea, anyway. Okay, well, thanks that's a so good much. Idea. Uh, okay, thank you, guys. Yep. Yep.